morning everyone so my name is d ramacharyalu i am working as an assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering institute of aeronautical engineering so this course is about elements of mechanical engineering so in elements of mechanical engineering today we are going to discuss about introduction to advanced manufacturing systems as you can see there are multiple manufacturing systems available in the market so depending on the type of workpiece or depending on the type of uh, object we want to manufacture different techniques will be used so some examples of manufacturing processes are starting from casting starting from casting then machining then uh final finishing so these are the different stages of manufacturing process which is to be followed in any manufacturing unit so depending on the type of object we want to manufacture we will use different types of techniques for example in casting we will use the heat from any kind of source and this heat can be used to melt the iron or any metal element so this heat heated molten metal can be converted into any required shape so converting this molten metal into any required shape this process is called casting so this requires a this process requires a mold cavity so what is a mold cavity a mold is a shape of an object into which we have to cast a metal uh, metal object so this mold is first prepared by using sand so mostly the casting process is made made by sand casting so the molten metal is uh, poured into this mold and it is left to solidify that means it is left to cool then the object which we get in the shape of mold can be used by machining or any other processes okay so in today's class we are going to see what is cnc and we are going to study about advanced manufacturing systems so there are general manufacturing systems which uh, rather can be called as conventional manufacturing systems so they are like lathe machine milling machine drilling machine so these are some of the examples of conventional manufacturing processes by which we can obtain a metal object of required shape and size so coming to lathe machine we can use the lathe machine for turning operations there are multiple operations we can perform on a lathe machine so this working of lathe milling drilling and uh, diff different operations can be studied in uh, manufacturing processes so in this course we are going to study about the cnc machines so what are the processes can be done using lathe milling drilling machines etc some other kinds of machines they are done by a skilled person we need a skilled person to do all these processes so back in the year 1960s uh, the ford company ford it is very famous manufacturing of automotives so this automobile company uh, thought of automizing the processes like it want to manufacture the products manufacture the automobile parts using computer controlled machines so what is computer controlled machines we should know what is a computer controlled machine first of all we should know nc nc stands for numerical control numerical control means we are going to control the lathe milling or drilling any kind of machine using numerical control so the numerical control itself is can be done by giving some kinds of uh, computer instructions to the machine for example lathe machine 
So all the conventional processes can be done by CNC. So previously numerical control was developed. So numerical control is nothing but using numerical codes for manufacturing processes, for controlling the machines. So when we add computer to, the, to this, we get CNC. So CNC machine is the thing which is being controlled by a computer. So the full form of CNC is computer numerical control. So in computer numerical control, we are going to control the machine, manufacturing machine with the help of a computer. So why do we need to control the machine with the help of a computer? So previously in conventional machining processes, the people used it to, a skilled person used to manufacture uh, or uh, work on a machine. So whenever a human being is working, so human beings are not that much precise. We cannot control the machine or we cannot uh, make the machine to work precisely. And at the same time, human beings are very prone to, uh, we can easily get what we call working for a long hours, we cannot do the precise work. So which indicates we have to use computers in the place of human beings. So there are three points why computers are introduced into uh, these machines. First thing is uh, the computers can work in less time, they can work precisely and they can do repetitive tasks. So human beings are very easily, they will get uh, boring or repetitive tasks. They cannot be done by human beings. That is why computer numerical control machines are introduced. So in uh, today's class, we are going to see uh, the CNC machines. So the CNC machine is uh, computer numerical control. Uh, first of all, we'll see what is automation. So the automation is nothing but it is the technology by which a process or a procedure is accomplished without human assistance. So here we can see a process can be accomplished without human, human assistance, which means no need for human being to do that work. A computer and a machine, this combinedly will complete a task which is given to it. So without human assistance, we can do any work. So that is why this entire process is called automation. So automation itself indicates there is no need for human assistance for doing any procedure. Okay. So it is implemented using a program of instructions combined with a control system that executes the instructions. So whenever we want to automate a process, like there are many processes in day to day life, we can see they can be automated. Like uh, one example for automation in day to day life is we can use some machines like milling or lathe machine. So these machines required a very skilled labor. So we can replace those machines with the CNC machines or robots for doing the work precisely. So, so automation is a technology which is uh, used. So this technology uses uh, a control system and a program. Okay. So the second point is the to automate a process power is required both to drive the process itself and to cooperate the program and control system. So what are the key components of any automation? The automation requires power. Here the power should be divided into two parts. One is for machining the or uh, making the process. Second one is controlling the process. So the energy can be divided into what are the power can be divided into two parts. One is for uh, controlling the process. Like we have to use a computer for controlling the process. So for controlling the process, we need uh, some power and uh, remaining power can be used for doing the actual manufacturing process. So that is second point. And third point is although automation can be applied in a wide variety of areas, it is most closely associated with the manufacturing industries. So the automation process is everywhere. Like we in our days, we can see in uh, software industry, the automation is in very 
uh, rampantly, rampantly increasing. So the automation is nothing but uh, to include computers in the place of human beings for doing a task. So even software programs are also being generated by an uh, artificial intelligence. Recently, Chat GPT has came into very popularity. So this is where the automation has been done. The automation has been done to software industry also. So the automation is everywhere. In every industry, automation is there. So our concern is only about manufacturing processes. So we have to see how automation is given into the automation process. So this is the overview of any automated manufacturing system in an industry. So there are two levels. You can see on the left side, this entire thing is the production system. This production system contains different levels of uh, manufacturing processes or tasks that should be controlled. So first thing is the first level that is enterprise level. So enterprise level is the level where the manufacturing support systems will be working. So we can rather start this process from the bottom. Here we can see the center one manufacturing system is there. Manufacturing system is nothing but a system which can manufacture metal parts or metal automobile elements etc. So this manufacturing system will be supported by different uh, other systems. So the different other systems are manufacturing support systems which is in the enterprise level and then quality control system which will check the quality of the parts being produced using the manufacturing systems and then material handling technologies. Material handling technology is the process where the raw materials are being handled, raw materials as well as the finished products, how these products are handled, how they are packaged, how they are uh, transported and how they are delivered to the end consumer. So these four parts are the key blocks of any industry, of any manufacturing industry. So first one is manufacturing system. Second one is uh, manufacturing support. This is of the secondary level. And uh, third one is quality control. This will check the quality of the manufactured products. And then third one is material handling process, material handling technologies. So all these processes are normally done in the conventional form in uh, any kind of uh, manufacturing system or manufacturing industry. So now we have given the automation. Now the manufacturing process has been automated. Whatever the manufacturing process. Suppose I will take an example of uh, a industry which produces automobile parts. Suppose I want to prepare, I want to manufacture a automobile part like I want to prepare the door of a automobile. Like for a car, I want to manufacture a door. So I will use this manufacturing system. This manufacturing system will, first of all, it will mold a metal body into the shape of a car, car door. And then again, this uh, manufactured uh, casted door is taken into further process for finishing where it will be finished off like uh, it will be given a smooth finish because in casting we will get a rough object we have to finish the object uh, to get smooth uh, surface and all so this is done using any any kind of machining process or simply grinding and then finally the car body can be painted so the painting operation can also be done with uh, manually it can be done although we can uh, automate it. So all these steps like uh, casting the door, uh, finishing the door and uh, painting the door. There are like three operations we are discussing. Casting the door which is uh, casting the molten metal into required shape of a car door and then finishing the surface of the door. And then third one is painting the door. So all these three processes can be automated. So 
we can use the automation for doing these three processes automatically with the help of a computer control or a robot. So robots are also very important uh, part of automation. So robots can also be used for doing these all operations. Rather we can call this as automation only. So uh, robots uh, are also a kind of automation. So the first process, what is the first process? We are casting a door. So for casting, we can use a robot for doing the casting process. That means preparing a mold cavity and uh, preparing the molten metal and pouring this molten metal into the mold cavity. This whole process can be done by a robot. So this is automated. And then second process, machining. Machining process is where the objects are uh, grinded for smooth finish. So in machining process also, we can use robots. Simply we can use any hand grinding machine for getting a smooth surface. But this hand grinding machine can be uh, very hard while if we want to manufacture uh, 200 number of doors in a single day. A single human being cannot do this much of work. So we have replaced the machine. Uh, we have replaced the human being with the help of a robot. Okay. So this machining also can be done by human being. So this can be uh, done by a robot. And then third process is painting. So painting can also be done using a robot. So what are the sprays that you use for painting can be connected to a robot and a particular instructions can be given to the robot and this robot will move in the given direction and it will paint the entire car body or car door for our uh, instance. So this entire system can be automated using a computer numerical control. So at the factory level, we can automate everything like uh, we can use uh, CNC machines for automating every process like for manufacturing we have seen these three processes these three processes can be uh, automated and in material handling also we can automate material handling like we can use robots for uh, arranging the raw materials or they can be uh, after the finishing of the end product we can stack them or we can pack or we can load into trucks using robots. So all these operations can be automated. So mostly we will use robots for uh, material handling process. And then for quality control also. In quality control also we can automate like we can use vision sensors or uh, position sensors. So different types of sensors can be used for quality check of the particular object which is manufactured in the manufacturing system. So how these uh, vision or uh, uh, position control systems will work? So, so how automation can be done in quality control? So in quality control, the vision or position sensors can be used. So these are the sensors which can be used to uh, identify the defects in a body. So Vision sensors uses a computer connected camera. So like uh, we will use a normal camera. This will record the surface of the body or uh, uh, this uh, video is uploaded into a computer system. That computer system will analyze the video or it will analyze the image given by the vision system so that it can analyze if there are any uh, cracks, there are any defects in the body, those things can be uh, identified using a vision system. And also position sensor. Position sensors are used for measuring the length, width, height of any object. So position sensors can be used to measure the or to check the object is in the actual dimensions or not. Okay. So because we have to manufacture a a large batch of uh, objects, we have to see all the objects are manufactured in the same dimensions. 
So when we are manufacturing at a large scale, like we are manufacturing thousands of products in a single day, like working for 24 hours a day, we have to use these position sensors or any kind of automation to check the quality of each and every object. And uh, moreover, this uh, quality control system is another subject or uh, in mechanical engineering where the quality of the objects are measured or studied. Okay, so coming to the automation processes, in this diagram we can see all the three systems, quality control, material handling and manufacturing systems, all these three processes can be automated using a computer numerical control or robot. Both the CNC and the robots work uh, in the same manner. And then we will go to the next slide. So let us see the basic elements of any automated system. So any automated system will have three components. So the first one is power to accomplish the process. Second one is a program to direct the process. And third one is a control system to actuate the instructions. So these three are the key components of any automated system. Okay. So first of all, in the first process is power to accomplish the process. We'll see in the next slide. So power to accomplish the automated process. So why do we need power? Why do we need uh, power in CNC? So first thing is, there are two components of any CNC machine. One is uh, machine which do the process. And second one is ma machine which will control the process. So these are the two components of any manufacturing system. First one is the machine which will do the process like lathe machine, milling machine or drilling machine. And second one is a computer uh, related machine which can control the first process. Okay. These two components, these two components require electricity or electrical power. So electrical power should be given to these two uh, parts of the automated system so that it can work perfectly. So we'll see first of all, so the power to accomplish the automated process, there are different uh, ranges in there. There are different stages are there. So first one is electrical power is widely available at moderate cost. So electrical power is the key source of uh, energy that can be used for both process and control, manufacturing process and the machine which is controlling the manufacturing process. So it is an important part of the industrial infrastructure. In most of the industries which are related to any kind of uh, manufacturing, starting from nut and bolts to aeroplane industry. So the electrical in electrical energy is the key source of energy for any kind of manufacturing process. So it is an important part of uh, industrial infrastructure. So without electricity, we cannot start an industry. Uh, and then second point is electrical power can be readily converted to alternative energy forms like mechanical, thermal, electrical, light, acoustic, hydraulic and pneumatic. So these are the different forms of uh, energy which can be uh, transformed from electrical energy. Okay. So electrical energy can be used to drive um, uh, an electric motor which can produce a mechanical energy, first one. So the electrical energy can be used to run a motor which will produce mechanical energy. And then it can be used as a thermal source when uh, a nichrome cable is connected to electricity or uh, we can see this example in the day to day life like uh, we will use the electrical heaters or electrical geysers. So where we can get hot water. So here where the electrical energy is converted into thermal energy. And then third one is light. We can see we are using lights in our uh, home. The electrical energy can be converted into light. Okay. And then acoustics. Acoustics is nothing but sound. So the electrical energy can be converted into acoustics and also hydraulics. Hydraulics means 
using a hydraulic coil, we can create a large force. Okay. So, depending on the usage, we can convert the electrical energy into hydraulic energy also. And then last one is pneumatic energy. So, the electrical energy can be easily converted into pneumatic energy. Pneumatic energy is nothing but it, uh, the pneumatic system uses a uh, compressed air. So, pneumatic system will use this compressed air where the compressed air is forcibly uh, sent into a cylinder which will actuate on the other side. Okay. So, that uh, pneumatic and hydraulic systems can be studied in uh, fluid mechanics and uh, hydraulic machines uh, course. So, in second point we have seen how electrical energy can be easily converted into many forms of energy and then third point is electrical power at low levels can be used to accomplish functions such as signal transmission, information processing and data storage and communication. So these are uh, where very low amount of electrical energy can be used for doing some certain tasks like signal transmission, information processing, data storage, storage and communication. So these are some of the examples of so, the communication systems. So, the first one is sig signal transmission where we can use very small amount of uh, electrical energy for transmitting, transmitting the information like we use mobile phones. So, mobile phones uses very small amount of uh, uh, electrical energy which can be used for transmission of the signal and then information processing. All the computer uh, programming uh, units like CPUs are there central processing units, computers are uh, information processing centers where we can uh, use very low levels of electrical power for processing the information. Best example is computer. And then data storage and communication. Data storage is nothing but we will use a hard disks in, on, uh, in all computers and mobile phones we will use uh, the pen drives are there, storaging devices, hard disk, uh, hard disk is there solid state uh, hard disks are there. So, these are all some of the data storing devices where very small amount of energy is used for a uh, particular purpose. And then communication. We know mobile phones are uh, better communication devices where we can use very low amount of electrical power for communicating with one another. And the last point is electrical energy can be stored in long life batteries for use in locations where an external source of electrical power is conveniently not available. So, this electrical power can be stored in batteries. Some long life batteries are there, short life batteries are there. Uh, in batteries, we can store this electrical energy. This electrical energy can be used or this electrical energy can be uh, used for running any other processes like manufacturing process or automation process. Okay, so electrical energy can be stored in long, uh, long life batteries for usage when there is no convenient power sources available. When we want to, so the best example for this is we can use, we can use solar energy where conventional energy sources are exhausting day to day. We can use these alternative power sources for doing the manufacturing processes. Okay. So, in this first one is fossil fuels, solar energy, water, wind. So, these are some of the alternative power sources which can be used for running the automated system. As we have discussed earlier that automated system needs a lot of electrical power for working like uh, there are two components. First one is the machine which is doing the process and second one is the machine which is controlling the process. So, these two machines, machine 1 and machine 2, machine 1 is processing, machine 2 is controlling the process. These two machines should be supplied some kind of uh, electrical power. So, the conventional electrical power what we get from uh, uh, hydraulic power plants or any other power plants uh, is exhausting day by day. That is why we have to search for alternative power sources where we can uh, use these uh, for power sources for running the automation in manufacturing processes. 
So these are some of the uh, alternative power sources. First one is uh, fossil fuels. Second one is uh, solar energy, water, wind. So fossil fuels are nothing but uh, like petrol we can use, petroleum products and coal. These are some of the examples of uh, fossil fuel. And then solar energy. The solar energy, solar radiation which is coming from the sun, this can be captured and uh, th this can be converted into electrical energy. We all know this is a very famous uh, procedure. So in all the satellites also, we will use the solar energy as the key power source for running the satellites. And then water. Water can be used as a uh, uh, power source. Like uh, there are two ways. One is the tidal waves which are being generated in the oceans or seas. They can be used as a source for electrical energy. Where we can get tidal energy can be converted into electrical energy. And then hydraulic energy also we can develop with the help of water. Where we can store a large amount of uh, river water behind a dam. And we can use this uh, potential energy of the water. And we can convert that uh, hydraulic energy into electrical energy with the help of a hydraulic turbine. And then wind energy. We can use windmills to produce electrical energy, which can be used for automation processes. Okay. And then this is the second component of the, the computer numerical control. What is the first component? First component is the power to uh, enable the machines to work and the second one is we need a program of uh, instructions which can operate or which can make the manufacturing process system to work in a required manner. So the action performed by an automated process uh, is defined by a program of instructions. Okay, We need a set of programs for uh, making the manufacturing system work. Whether the manufacturing operation involves low, medium or high production rates, each operation requires a processing step. So there could be some processes which requires one or two steps of program which is to be given in order to complete the process. On the contrary, uh, there might be some 10 to 15 or hundreds of uh, programming uh, inputs should be given to a manufacturing system but completing the process okay so like this there are different types of systems depending on the low medium or high production we can give different programming steps for the processing of the manufacturing and then each particular operation will have separate processing step in the work cycle program so while giving the programming steps each programming step is uh, given to each step of the manufacturing process. So each uh, each process will have a separate program. So the pro set of instructions we are giving to the manufacturing system, they should be separately given to each of the process. So if I have two processes to be done, I have to give two programs. I cannot do the two programs using one. Uh, two processes cannot be done with a single program okay and uh, work cycle programs are also called as part programs in numerical control here we can see what is a part program so the procedure which we use for manufacturing is process manufacturing a object is called work cycle program so this is the program given to any manufacturing system for generating a product so uh, here part program is there this part program is nothing but if we want to manufacture a product, an object is there like uh, bearing is there. If we want to manufacture a bearing, we may need some 10 steps, 10 manufacturing processes to complete the manufacturing of this bearing. So we need 10 set of part programs for 10 sets of part programs to complete the manufacturing of this bearing. Okay. So part program is nothing but the each and individual program given separately for completing each and every step of the work cycle. Work cycle is nothing but the entire process of manufacturing any object. 
So we can see an example here. Uh, so this is the automated turning operation where we can uh, turn a mechanical uh, rod, a mechanical rod of diameter some uh, 10 centimeters. We can uh, process this turning operation on the metal rod where we can automate this process by using these are the different steps of automation a turning operation generally what we will do in a conventional turning operation we will load the metal rod into the lathe machine we will put the tool in the tool post so this entire process is done on the lathe machine so the tool is taken towards the uh, the tool is given feed into the uh, metal rod where we can turn the metal rod and we can reduce the diameter of it okay now we will see how to automate this process so we need set of instructions like one two three four five five steps are there so for each step we have to give a separate part program in order to develop the required object so the first process is loading the workpiece so I want to load a workpiece into the lathe machine, automated lathe machine. I need one program for that. And then second one is positioning cutting tool. The cutting tool should be positioned in such a manner. We have to remove a required amount of metal from the object. Okay. Position of the cutting tool should be given in a separate program. And then third one is turning, turning, which is the process of removing the extra material from the metal rod. So this process should be given a separate uh, program and then reposition tool to a safer location. So whenever the process is completed, the tool which is cutting the metal rod should be moved back or it should be taken to a safer location where, where it, it does not touch the metal rod or the workpiece. So we have to write a separate program for that. And last one is unload the workpiece. So unloading the workpiece is also a part program. So separate program has to be given for these all five operations. So this is how the process of turning a metal rod or reducing the diameter of a metal rod is done in five steps. For all the five steps, we have to give five different part programs. And then last one. So we have seen we are studying the different components of uh, manufacturing computer numerical uh, computer numerical control first one is power we need power for uh, operating the machines second one is we need a program to control the process and then third one is control system which controls the entire manufacturing system okay now we are discussing the control system so we'll see what is a control system and what it will do. Generally, uh, the control system is an automated system executes the program of instructions. So in the second stage, we have given a set of programs for each step of the manufacturing process. So each step of program should be uh, executed by this control system. So this control system is like a CPU or it, which will control all the remaining parts of the uh, manufacturing system. We can simply call this as control system can be called as brain of human body. Okay, this is very similar to human body. So the control system of an automated system, it will execute all the programs of instructions. And then it causes the process to accomplish its defined function. So if I give a 10 steps of program for completing a task, for completing a manufacturing process. So the control system should be a working in such a way, it has to work starting from step one to 10, not in a different manner. It has to go from step one to step 10 for uh, completing the particular manufacturing process. And then the control system can be either closed loop or open loop system, okay. That means uh, sometimes closed loop and open loop systems are very important when we are discussing about control systems. Open loop is nothing but it does not take any feedback from the output. So we have input 
and we have output. So in between we have a control system. So this control system will take the input and generate the output. So we need a separate system. We need a feedback system which will analyze this output and it will give to the input. So if the system is open system, there is no feedback system. Okay. So there is no feedback taken from the output and it is converted into the input. So that uh, the next process or the next uh, step is modified accordingly. So if the system is open loop, we cannot uh, take any feedback. If the system is closed loop, we can take the output variables and this can be given to the input parameters. Okay. So that is what written here in closed loop control system. The output variable is compared with the input parameters. Okay. That is how uh, feedback control system or closed loop control system will work. So here we can take the example of a closed loop control systems. There are three examples are there. These are day to day life examples like we use in our uh, homes. First one is a refrigerator. So how a refrigerator will work? The main, the main work of any refrigerator is to keep the volume of uh, its uh, inside to keep it cool. Okay. So if I set the temperature to 5 degrees centigrade. So the refrigerator or the compressor inside the refrigerator will work to reach this 5 degrees centigrade temperature. What happens if the refrigeration system does not stop beyond this 5 degrees centigrade temperature? What happens? The temperature will further decreases and it may reach up to 0 degrees or negative temperatures also, which is not required. Okay. So that is why we have to install a feedback system where when the compressor or or the refrigeration system reaches a temperature of 5 degrees centigrade, it will take this feedback and it will send the information to the control system of the refrigerator to stop cooling. So, so that the refrigeration system does not overcool the system. Okay. Similarly, we can see the example of an air conditioner also. If we set the temperature of the AC to 24 degrees centigrade, there is a sensor in it temperature sensor which is called thermistor is used in the uh, both refrigerator and uh, air conditioner. So whenever the AC reaches a temperature of 24 degrees centigrade, it will stop working. And again, when the temperature rises, like if the temperature becomes 25 degrees centigrade, again the system will turn on and it will start cooling again. And the best third example is, very easy example is, the toilet flush, what we use in our uh, bathrooms. So this toilet tank is an automated system. Whenever we flush the tank, the water comes out of the system. I mean, the water comes out of the flush. And again, the tank, the flush tank has to fill. So the water from the overhead tank will enter into the flush tank and up to certain level because the flush tank is very small. It has a limited uh, volume capacity. Whenever the water is pouring into the flush tank from the overhead tank, so whenever the water reaches a certain level, what happens? A simple automated system is there. A simple automated feedback system is there where a ball will flow up in the water tank which will stop the further filling of the tank. Okay, so this can be used in any uh, tank systems also like overhead tanks nowadays people are using some sensors for uh, uh, identifying whether the tank is full or not. So this is the basic feedback system uh, of uh, any, uh, this can be used in the day to day life like uh, this is the basic example of a feedback control system. That's all for today and uh, we will discuss the closed loop and open loop systems, uh, the closed loop system is also called as a feedback control system. So in the next class, we are going to discuss these two topics, open loop and closed loop systems. Like, share and subscribe.
hit the bell icon for more updates